Welcome to the course on VLSI Physical Design with Timing Analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about Open STA, which is a static timing analysis tool. So, the content of this lecture will discuss about the background of the Open STA tool. Then we will have a four lab example uh, we will discuss in this lecture. So, we are discussing about what is the input and output of a static timing analysis tool. In this case, we have used uh, open STA, but however, these things can be applicable for any kind of static timing analysis tool. So, first of all, what are the inputs to the static timing analysis tool? We have uh, basically dot lib, which contains the timing information of the standard cell library. So, the dot libs file should be input to your uh, static timing analysis tool because it contains all the timing information of the logic gates of the standard cell library. The second thing which is going to the static timing analysis tool is the netlist. So, here, here this netlist is uh, maybe it is coming from the logic synthesis tool that is the gate level netlist or it can come from the physical synthesis tool uh, which is having the information about the parasitics also. Okay. So, this uh, netlist can be coming out of the logic synthesis tool or it can come from the physical synthesis tool. So, that is the second input to your static timing analysis. Then we have some kind of timing constraints. Okay. So, the timing constraint we need to give it to the static timing analysis tool such as create clock, set input delay, set output delay all these should be also given as input to the static timing analysis tool. Then the fourth one is the script actually. Script means uh, you have some kind of uh, input conditions all these also go to the static timing analysis tool. Uh, then we have this file, this file is the post trout parasitic extraction file that is the uh, standard parasitic exchange format. So, that is also going as input to your static timing analysis tool. So, all these files are going as input to the static timing analysis tool and what are the outputs coming out of it. So, we have timing reports and quality checks all are coming out whether my uh, setup uh, is meeting or not, my hold constraints are meeting or not, all these are coming as report. Then we have one more file SDF, SDF stands for standard delay format which is coming out of the static timing analysis tool. This SDF uh, file is used by uh, verification tools uh, for doing the dynamic timing analysis and uh, it is uh, improve the speed of dynamic timing analysis by using this uh, uh, SDA file or the standard delay format file. So, this is the place we, where you can get uh, help related to STA, okay. STA minus help will give all this. Then you can install the open STA which is coming from the open road installation and uh, this is an example which is given in, in this uh, uh, location, you can download. Okay. And uh, you, we can copy these files. Okay. These two files are needed. One is the library and uh, the example one. So, this is the lab one actually what you can say. So, then we can run this one in two mode. One is uh, with uh, SPEP file, SPEA file and so here uh, one thing, here we will run this tool uh, in two mode without uh, SPEP without SPEP file and this is with SPEP file. So, then we can see what is the difference in the report. If you can see this is without SPEP, you can see the slag is 9.43 and uh, with SPEP it is uh, drastically reduced to 1.52 and if you can see the delay here is changed to large number here. Okay. So, this is the first uh, lab and this is uh, in the same lab we can uh, dump the capacitance, sleeve, delay, timing information all in tabular format. For detailed reporting in the lab 2 we are reporting timing without SDF and with SDF. Basically, we are checking whether uh, what is the impact using SDF without using the SDF. You can see here without using the SDF, this is zero overload model 
you have a slag of 9.43 and with SDF you have a slag of 6.20. So, SDF is a standard delay format that has delay numbers that can be used at any stage to speed up the runtime. The SDF is used to do dynamic timing analysis for timing verification. By using the SDF tool, the runtime of the dynamic timing analysis tool is improved. Then we have uh, uh, another lab, lab 3, where we are doing timing analysis with on chip variation and here we are using uh, D rate factor, okay, what we discussed in our uh, OCB class or the CRPR class. So, this uh, direct factor will be used to accurately calculate the delay with on chip variation effects. And if you can see, so this is the slag without direct, and this is the slag with direct. So, in this case, so we are doing a lab experiment to check that what is the delay of the into raise path on the output coming from the AOCs and what is the delay for uh, race to race path. So, this is uh, also found it can be found out using uh, this uh, timing analysis tool. In all the four labs whatever we have demonstrated, we have taken a very small design without using the clock tree. But in real design, we have clock tree inserted inside the design. So, whenever you are doing the timing analysis with the clock tree inserted, we need to use a command called set underscore propagated underscore clock to know the clock network delays in the timing reports. The command set underscore propagate underscore clock is used to show the clock network delay in the timing calculation reports. So, we will discuss some of the uh, SDC, SDC stands for synopsis design constraint. So, this uh, synopsis design constraints are uh, basically predominantly used in static timing analysis. So, uh, whenever you do any kind of design, we need to give some constraint to the design and those de constraints are read by the uh, tools to optimize your design. So, we have to give some constraint to the tools um, basically to optimize the design. So, we will start with the clock which is the one of the fundamental signal uh, that is used. So, in this case we are using create underscore clock, this is the command to set the clock constraint and here the clock period is 10. So, if you can take a clock here, then the period of the clock is 10 nanosecond. So, nanosecond is defined in your dot lib files. So, uh, what is the unit of time? So, if the time unit is something different, then the corresponding number will be reflected. So, then if you can see here, your on period is 5, this is 5 nanosecond. Okay. So, this 5 corresponds to this one and this 10 corresponds to this one. Then your uh, gate port clock. So, gate port clock means that the clock what is there in your design. So, the, this clock pin what is there in your design which is going to all the flip flops. It is going to this flip flop as well as this it is going to this flip flop. So, this is related to create clock constraint. Then we will go to the set driving cell. So, uh, let us say I have a design which is driven by one cell. So, then I can decide which cell to be used as a driving cell. So, the constraint here is that set underscore driving underscore cell is the command and there are some switches here like hyphen lib underscore cell is the switch and what type of cell I am using this buff x2, this is the buff x2, this is the cell name of this buffer driving cell. Then it is taken from a library a VLSI 18. Okay. So, VLSI 18 is the standard cell library from where we are uh, taking that buff x2. Then we have uh, using the pin 3. So, this pin is basically your pin 3. 
So, this will be used to evaluate the design. So, this uh, constraint is given to the design such that the driving cell is used BOP X2 and it is connected to the pin 3. So, next we will go to the set output load constraint. So, the command for setting the output load is set underscore load. This is the command. Then there are some switches are there. What is the value of uh, the load? So, the pin underscore load is the one of the switch which is defining 0 0.2. So, 0 0.2 what is the unit that is defined in your dot lib file? Uh, usually, it is pico farad, but it always you look into that file to check that what is the unit in the dot lib file. So, then your output pin, this pin is basically out underscore pin bracket 3. So, the corresponding buffer inside the design will be designed such a way that it can drive 0 0.2 picofarad load. So, this load is very important parameter whenever you are designing any kind of things using the logic synthesis tool. If you are not adding any load, it will not add any buffer. Otherwise, if you add the load, then it will use the logical effort method to calculate the effective driver which can drive this 0 0.2 picofarad load. Now, we will go to the another constraint set input delay constraint. So, this is the command for the set input delay. And if you can see here, you have one thing is written clock. So, we have a clock signal is there. Okay. And with respect to the clock signal, this is your clock, my in 1 is set. How much delay it will be with respect to the rising edge of the clock? Because here it is written rising. So, this delay is let us say. 2 nanosecond and this is 2 nanosecond. So, the total period is 4 nanosecond and your input in 1 is rising here. So, from here to here my delay is 2.3 nanosecond, 2.3 nanosecond. So, this 2.3 nanosecond is defined here. So, this is with respect to the clock edge, what is the delay of the input pin in 1, input pin in 1. Now, I will explain the another constraint set output delay constraint. So, the command for set output delay constraint is this one. Then we have uh, basically the clock with respect to clock, how much my into, into is a pin between the blocks. Now, I have the clock is going to all the gates, all the gates. So, if you can have a clock here, so this is your clock signal, let us say this is 2 nanosecond, I am assuming this, it is not given here, but I am assuming 2 nanosecond. My in 2, this is the pin this in 2 is basically how much it is delay with respect to the clock edge. So, this delay with respect to the clock edge rising edge of the clock is basically 3 nanosecond. So, it will co come in the middle of the positive half cycle. So, this delay with respect to the rising edge of the clock is 3 nanosecond. So, this is basically set output delay command which is coming output from a one block and going as input to the other block. All these five constraints are frequently used in logic synthesis tool and uh, timing analysis tool. Similarly, you have uh, many constraints available in the uh, synopsis design constraint file, you can go through it. So, here we are uh, going to explain one open source tool called open STA. So, here we have different uh, labs are there we will explain one at a time. So, uh, how to open this uh, uh, open ST tool? You have to type STA. Okay. So, you have to type STA. So, then it will go to the open STA tool prompt. Then uh, you will do one experiment. What is the impact of uh, doing the static timing analysis 
with parasitic and without parasitics. So, here uh, we are uh, the first line is the read liberty basically it uh, reads the dotly file uh, from the library. The first line is uh, reading the dotly file and it is a slow corner dotly file. Uh, so, here we will run that uh, command. Then uh, it returns once means uh, it, it is able to read that file. Then the second command is uh, we are reading the Verilog uh, file dot v file generated from the logic synthesis tool uh, EOSIS. So, this will be uh, also provided. Okay. So, it was uh, reading uh, the file uh, was proper that is why it, it is returning 1 here. Then uh, the third step is basically the link design to the top Verilog code. So, it will do the linking of the design. Okay. Now, this step is also successful. Now, after doing this, we will add some kind of uh, uh, SDC command. Synopsis design constraint here. Uh, for There are the three clocks are there. So, all the clocks, uh, what it does is that it is create a clock okay, whose period is 10 uh, time unit. The time unit is defined in the dot lib file. Uh, if it is nanosecond, it will be 10 nanosecond. If it is picosecond, it will be 10 picosecond. So, 3 clocks will be uh, created using this command. Now, after you do this, then you have a set input uh, delay, uh, basically how much uh, delay it will introduce between the clock and the uh, input pins. So, that will be given here. So, after you set uh, these uh, initial uh, parameters, then you can do the report check. Okay? Then you can do the report check. It is basically report check is equivalent to doing the uh, timing analysis. So, this is very important command. So, this command uh, if we have discussed in our static timing analysis, there are two things. One is called the data arrival time okay, and data required time. Okay. So, your data required time is basically 9.84, but data arrival time is uh, 0 0.41. So, that difference is basically the slag what we discussed in our timing analysis uh, lectures. So, since the slag is positive, then design is meeting the timing. However, there was uh, one uh, point what we have not included in this timing analysis is the parasitic extracted from the actual design. So, what we are doing here it is that this is the analysis without using the parasitics. If you use the parasitics, how the uh, mind timing will change, uh, we will look into that. So, here the slag amount is 9.43. Now, if I go back, first we will do the report underscore parasitic underscore annotation. So, it will uh, report how many on annotated nets are present. Then we will uh, uh, basically read the um, SPEP file uh, which is coming from the uh, physical synthesis. DSPF is a detailed parasitic extraction format consisting of RC information required to calculate interconnect delays. Now, we have a report parasitic annotation that reports how many annotated nets are present with their RC information. Now, after doing this, what we have to do is that we have to check how many timing is changing, how my timing is changing after including the SPEP file, SPEF SPEP file. So, if you can see here, now my uh, timing basically if you can see is drastically changed. Earlier my slack was 9.43, uh, the difference between your data required time minus data arrival time. However, after you do this uh, uh, including the parasitics into account, my slag becomes 1.52, which is more realistic because in actual uh, design, our uh, parasitic needs to be included because in the actual chip inside the chip we have interconnects. We need to include that while doing the timing analysis. So, this is the this is basically there is one more thing we can learn here. We can do uh, maximum timing analysis and minimum timing analysis also this command will do the maximum timing analysis the will get the same report because we are doing the maximum timing analysis here. 
because it's it uh, you have uh, basically data arrival time and data required time will get the same report. But we have uh, if we can set uh, the accuracy to four digits, then this is the uh, basically command for that. So, if you can see here uh, now the my accuracy is increased to four digit. Earlier case it was only two digit. Okay. So, this is a, a two digit only. Now, after I introduce uh, uh, this command max hyphen digit equal to 4, now I can express my delay in 4 digit after the decimal point. Now, there is also a command to show the capacitance value. So, here you can see, we can see the capacitance value here uh, using this one. So, you can see this cap values. So, here the cap values is also mentioned uh, in the report. Okay. So, that is also very useful to know how much uh, capacitance loading is there at different nodes. So, now uh, after this uh, capacitance thing, we can also list out the capacitance input slew, what is the input pin, what is the nets and fan out all these uh, things together in the report. So, this is the command for that, this is the command for that. If you can see here we have capacitance, the first one is the fan out, each uh, fan out is one, capacitance is this one, then the slew at the input of the logic gate, then the delay, then the time. And it, there are two parts, one is data arrival time calculation, this is the part responsible for data arrival time calculation, this is the part which is required for data required time calculation. Then we have to do the uh, subtraction from the data required time minus data arrival time okay so that will give me my uh, slag and the slag is positive means your design is passing the uh, constraint if the slag is negative means that there is some kind of violation in the timing constraint so now this is all about the uh, max timing constraint or the critical path analysis then we will also look into the hold timing analysis, the mean path analysis. It is input to raise hold path. So, here you can do this one using report, okay. if you can go here report underscore checks hyphen path underscore delay mean. So, in for, uh, uh, for hold analysis, we have to write mean. So, here there is one interesting point here is that what I already taught in my uh, timing courses, here you need to find the data arrival time here, then the data required time here, then the subtraction will be basically data arrival time minus data required time in case of whole check. So, that is the reason your slag is next, data arrival time minus data required time in case of mean timing analysis. So, if you can see here you have a hold violation, slag is violated, we need to fix that one. So, this is the lab 1. So, we will uh, uh, do the second uh, uh, lab here. Uh, uh, first of all, we will open the uh, open ST tool using the command STA. Okay. So, now this is the command prompt, then the, this is the script for this one. Here uh, we are basically looking for uh, what is the uh, importance of SDF file? Okay, so basically, if you can see here, this is the thing what is same as your previous uh, example. First one is the read uh, liberty file. Okay, dot lib file. First one, so reading is successful. That's why it is returning one. Then the second one is uh, reading the Verilog file. This is the example uh, second example or example one. So basically, this is reading the Verilog file. Then we are linking the design with the top level using the link design command. Okay. So, now after the doing this you have a create clock. Okay. So, you, here we are doing the create clock and uh, all the input file um, basically variable setting in this command. Okay. I am doing both together. Mm -hmm. Then you will do the report check. Okay. So, here we are not used the SDF file. Okay. There are two cases, case 1 we are doing the timing analysis report check without SDF in the first case. Okay. So, without SDA this is the slag 9.43 is the slag. Data arrival time, this is data arrival time, this is the data required time. Okay. So, now 
you we have a data required time minus data arrival time is 9.43 your slag is met ok. So, the design is met, but now what we are doing is that we are uh, uh, taking the SDA file here example dot SDA file is there where the actual delay number and interconnects. So, here we will do the timing analysis considering the SDA file which is generated from the uh, timing analysis tool ok. So, this SDA file we are using here and checking how much uh, slag it will be there. So, first we will do, do the uh, report annotated check ok. Then uh, we will do that uh, here uh, read SDF for this file which is generated from the STA tool ok. We are reading this one. Now, we are doing report annotated check. So, here uh, basically if you can see is that uh, uh, number of uh, things are annotated is 3 ok. Number of uh, setup arc and hold arc is annotated is 3. Now, we will do the report checks ok. So, report checks we will do ok. So, if you can see here now we are calculating the um, data arrival time first then the data required time second then the difference of that will give me my slag. So, this one here the slag is 6.2 time unit uh, where if you can see the our uh, slag is reduced compared to the previous analysis. Previous uh, analysis we can see the slag is 9.43 because here we have not taken the SDA file into account while doing the timing analysis. But in this case we are taken the SDA file into account doing the timing analysis that is why my slag is reduced. But uh, if you could look into the design this is more accurate uh, this uh, uh, taking the SDA file uh, into account is more accurate compared to without taking the SDA file. So, there was a small difference uh, compared to SPEP uh, versus SDA file, but whenever you are doing the timing analysis uh, considering SPEP file it takes more time to do the timing analysis. But if you dump the SDA file from the timing analysis and include that in doing the timing analysis uh, that can do the timing al analysis in less time. So, that is the advantage of using uh, SDA file while doing the timing analysis. So, this is the uh, basically lab 2 uh, where we are explaining the importance of SDA file. Now, we will uh, go into the basically third lab experiment where we are discussing the derating factor. So, importance of here is that how can we include a derating factors while doing the timing analysis. So, here if you can see here first of all we will uh, uh, open the tool which is open STA ok. So, now uh, here we will do the third lab experiment. Uh, the third lab experiment is uh, related to derating factor ok what we discuss in our timing analysis. So, here we have to define the kernels WC type and BC. WC stands for host kernel, PYP stands for typical kernel, BC stands for based kernel. So, we will define the kernels, then we will uh, read the uh, three files. Here uh, the host case is uh, whenever we are, we are reading the host case, our library we should use the slow library. The WC stands for host case and we are reading the slow library, ok. Now, we are uh, basically reading the reading the uh, typical library ok, uh, typical library or the nominal library, then we will read the uh, first library, then we will read the first library. So, now after you do this, then we can read the Verilog file ok, uh, the small Verilog file whatever we are using for this experiment, then we will link the design ok link design top ok. So, this will be linked to that uh, design ok that is done. Then we will uh, uh, like the previous examples we will create the clock and set input delay variables ok. So, that we will do here after this then we will go to the report checks. So, there are two cases are there one case without direct factor ok the one case without direct factor ok. 
So, this is the slag actually. So, we are calculating the data arrival time, okay, then data required time, then data required time uh, minus data arrival time, this is my slag. So, there is no uh, basically D rating factor is included in this analysis. Now, in the second case, uh, we are including the D rating factor hyphen early as 0.9, hyphen late as 1.1 what we discussed in our uh, lecture ok. So, this one is basically taken here on uh, the early case 0 0.9 and a late case 1.1. .1. Now, what we have to do is that report checks ok path delay mean uh, max we need to do ok. So, he here after doing all this you can see here there is a term called clock reconvergence pessimism removal. So, here those things are included and you can see that my slag is reduced little bit 9.39. Earlier it is uh, four three. earlier it is 9.43. Now, it is uh, slag is reduced 9.39 because of uh, this uh, on chip variation effects. So, if you can see here uh, the, the data arrival time ok. So, data arrival time if you can see here you have uh, more number of uh, so here it is 0 0.26 in the previous case it, this is uh, uh, basically 0, 0 0.23, 0 0.31, 0 0.41. So, here if you can see here it is 0 0.26, 0 0.35, 0 0.45 like that. So, there is a change in the data arrival time ok. So, due to which my slag is also modified. So, this is very important to consider this common uh, uh, clock reconvergence pessimism removal component while doing the timing analysis. So, this is the uh, third lab exercise which includes the D rating factor. Now, we will start this uh, 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 timing analysis tool typing STA ok. Now, we will do a experiment uh, basically uh, we have already done the logic synthesis using the open source tool EOSIS. What we are doing is that uh, our analysis can be uh, reported uh, differently using that uh, output netlist. Basically, whatever the gate level netlist we are getting from the EOSIS can be used to do the timing analysis using the this is uh, open STA tool, open STA tool. So, here we are reading that uh, Verilog file the same thing whatever we did and uh, here till this point is same ok. So, we are reading the file ok. So, this uh, uh, dot v file uh, whatever it is coming it is coming from the logic synthesis uh, uh, tool EOSIS. Now, what we are doing here is that we are doing the report check hyphen path delay max ok. So, if you, if you can see here Oh, here uh, our uh, delay is be between your input pin to the register ok. The delay is be between the input uh, uh, pin to the register. However, it is not the actual critical path, but we need to find uh, actual critical path using from register to register. How we can do that? Uh, we can we have to uh, do this kind of analysis uh, using this command. So, uh, if we uh, do this ok. So, if you can see here we our uh, basically uh, delay is from a register to the register ok. So, this is from one register to other register ok. So, the in that method we are uh, actually reporting the timing from register to register. So, which is more accurate compared to input pin to the register which is not which is happening in the previous case. So, which is not correct. So, this is actually the second case is the actual uh, register to register delay. So, this is the way, way how we can uh, basically read the reports of the timing analysis tool such a way that uh, uh, we can actually look into the actual critical path in the design instead of doing into a uh, some uh, basically um, unnecessary path which is not the actual critical path in the design. So, this is uh, the main point in this lecture. So, we discussed four labs 
related to static timing analysis. Thank you for your attention.